you know, the Oracle throws out a couple of Purifying Flames, you can very Five easily seconds. drop. Really? Even the, the tankier heroes like Tide and Sven are going to have to worry about that burst damage. But yeah, I'm, I'm probably favoring... Um, I'm favoring Wings a tiny bit, even barring the, the, the last picnics. I just think it's going to be hard for Faith in the early game Prepare to really find much. Battle. But we will see. <sighs> Okay, let's do these predictions, Andy. Item bugs. Item bug, item bug. All right, what do we got for predictions? Well, I went to highest magical damage and went with the Marana. Okay. 15 denies S4. Maybe Sven. Or would you... Are you just saying the lane? The safe laner is probably more likely to get higher denies than the mid laner. Top tips from Andy. Uh, play with the first triple kill. Ooh. Who's going to be the playmaker? S4, is it zapping around? Kill. Him or... or... Loader coming in. Jumping? Or maybe Blink. Him or Blink, I would guess. I'm going to go S4. I've gone with Blink here. We're going to go for a bit of balance in these predictions. Total number of trees destroyed. What the hell? Okay, that's That's random. it. That's it. Uh, I would say... Who's destroying trees here? Storm? Yeah, who can kill trees? Beastmaster? I'd say 51 to 175. I think that's ambitious. I, th I think I'm... it's going to be... Because what happens if he balls into the tree line when he's running away? He kills like 20 trees just doing that. All he right. does it like two or three right, times in a game. Me. You've yeah. sold me, yeah. <laughs> there we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have going into game one of Wings versus Alliance. For those of you who uh, have uh, been watching the other games, for those of you who haven't, just a bit of an update on uh, what these teams have been through so far. Spoiler warning, if you are going to go back and watch the VODs. But Wings, they were just playing up against OG, and the score did settle as 1-1. Very exciting series. And Alliance, they just played against Na'Vi, and they came out on it with a 2-0 lead. And uh, in a series that... Arguably, it wasn't really that close, was it? No, Alliance it was not just close. turned up and Navi were. Uh, they had a very good plan for what Navi wanted to do, yeah. and Navi just completely collapsed. Yeah. It was uh, it was pretty ugly for Navi fans. But Wings, obviously, being a a hard hitter here, heavy contender in the group stage. They are going for the rune. Uh, see what goes down. Uh, they can't fight this. Wings have to run. There's no way. Yeah, Alliance securing the space for this and drop. Oh, it's a bulldog. Was trying to take it away from the hands of the Nyx Assassin, but Faith being a little bit quicker on the clicker. Managed to grab a bounty ring in return, so 1-1 one, one each way. And uh, lane-wise, anything surprising? Well, Wings are going to be sending Shadow up to the top lane, and uh, Lotus yeah. going to be sent down to the bottom lane. So who's trying to go aggressive and, and who's dodging who here? Uh, it's definitely Wings dodging Alliance. Yeah. There's no way you want to play against this as a Slark. They want Faith Beyond to be against the tri lane for sure. The biggest issue that Slark has is that he is a notoriously weak laner. Any aggro lane against Slark is going to pressure him in regards to farm. So best case scenario is pretty much what they have now, having Shadow and Innocence against Bulldog solo. And he's taking quite a bit of damage here. He does have a, a boatload of regen though, so he should be fine. So you've seen your lanes as Alliance. Do you then move it back or do you just go, all right, okay, they predicted us, they've reacted, we just stick down here then? Uh, they need to move at least one hero. Okay. Uh, Ake can either look for the Beastmaster, or he can make his way towards top. Those are pretty much the two options. I guess pressuring mid is also uh, a play that he can make. Which looks like he's just going to toss out a casual Ignite and, and give S4 a little bit of a, a laning advantage. But yeah, the thing with Beastmaster is that since Ice Ice is just not being contested at all, I think in the long run it's probably still okay for Wings to completely sack their Nyx. He's getting quite a bit low here in the bottom lane, just being forced to hide out in the trees. But yeah, I think Wings are probably going to be okay with this. As long as uh, Ice Ice is jungling at a, a proper speed, it should be fine. Yeah, and, yeah, and as you said, the movement has been made, Ake. Turning up towards the top. We'll be there to back up Bulldog and try and do his bit in terms of slowing down the Slark's start here on this top lane. EGM with the Spirits coming out, seeing if you can find a cheeky Faith Piano hanging in the sidelines looking for experience. But the Nyx Assassin backs up safely. Mid lane matchup, Bling, 8 for 0, 8 for 3 on S4. Going relatively even here. But uh, as you said, because Wings do have that jungler, Alliance do need to look to get a little bit more out from the lanes. Yeah, I'm actually unsure if Ake going up here is the right play. I mean, yeah, you're going to be able to pull and whatnot. It'll get you some more EXP than I farm from Shadow. But man, free farm Beastmasters have a tendency to win games. I just see that hero so often get like an early book and then blink dagger and just completely crushes the game. So for Alliance's sake, I hope that doesn't happen. But with the start that Ice Ice has right now, you know, he's, he's already almost level four and it's two minutes into the game. I mean, in terms of, of dealing with the Beastmaster, is there any chance we see a movement from Alliance trying to, to hinder that or, or any kind of gank that can come out or do you feel the Alliance 
are pressured to stay in the lanes that they, they have found themselves in. Uh, I don't think Ake has much pressure to, to stay here at all. I think more often than not, what you want to do is you either want to be with the aisle looking for kills, or you want to just be sitting in the woods and forcing Ice Ice to not get any farm. Because he's the impact hero, right? He's the guy that you're looking at during the mid game and saying, okay, this guy's got a book one and a blink. He can solo kill our cores. Like, this guy oh. is going to have gigantic impact if you just leave him alone. And I mean, oh. EGM's going to come over here, but this is an aisle. This isn't the same effect as an eight armor ogre just walking at you and throwing out ignites. And let's be honest here, of all the heroes on the team of Alliance, Bulldog is probably the best hero at recovering because he's a Tide. He can get jungle stacks, they can stack the Ancients for him, they even have a Sven. So there's so many things that they have where they can recover farm on Bulldog. Like, I don't think... I don't know, I guess you could argue that having Ake here is still okay because it's, it's making the Slark not maybe totally free farm. I mean, I was going to say, looking at the farm, it's, it's not slowed down Shadow a lot. Yeah. He's 19 for 1. Uh, deny wise, uh, <laughs> you were right, Loader is the one to be watched. 17 for 16, so Loader maintaining a bit better control of the lane, that's for sure. You know, the Nyx Assassin proving to be less of an issue for him than these two are. Uh, it's it's close, and Shadow by no means is being held back. He he is up there in the CS. Yeah, I, I don't see the Ogre doing much here. Um, I'm not sure what the reasoning is personally. I mean, they clearly have one, otherwise he wouldn't be here. Maybe they're just concerned that if Ake starts moving around, maybe Innocence makes his way towards mid, and that would be really frustrating for S4 uh, until he hits level 6. That could be one reason. But for now, EGM's just chilling here with his Invis rune. Soaking some EXP up uh, from Ice Ice, but he's still almost level 6. It's four minutes into the game. Like, he's going to hit level 6. Well, he would have been 6 faster than S4 if EGM wasn't soaking from him, but he's still going to hit it first. I could maybe try and do so. EGM's got two points in the spirits. If he gets a solo kill, that would be absolutely huge. And speaking of, top lane. I burst him down, Shadow jumps in, Bulldog caught out alone. Ake not close enough to help, and EGM, he's actually been revealed here. Ice Ice just roars him up. He walked into the sentry. Wings kicking it off, two kills. Not what Alliance needed to be given away at this stage of the game. So, EGM's like, all right, I'm going to steal some EXP, then I'm going to give it right back. Enjoy. Just gets blasted by a roar. Maybe a blessing in disguise, because now he's not going to have the smoke roar available for middle lane, which very, very easily could have been a kill on us for. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was a good thing. I don't know. Wings, though, they're getting everything they want out of this laning phase for sure. You see Innocence eyeing a PGM, but he's going to jump forward. S4, he's just hit the level 6. We'll see how he can play around it. In fact, he is going to be looking towards Blink. EGM comes back and refueling him up, and Alliance find a kill. Ice Ice with the rotation. Can't do anything about it, though, because Ake's there with the Fire Blaster lines. They'll take a second double kill for S4. Very smoothly played there in the mid lane. And all of a sudden, that roar pays off, because he didn't have it to kill S4 in mid after all they go for that kill. All part of the EGM strats. He's playing the long con, <laughs> for sure. The long con always works. Just tank the roll. S4 says, good job, buddy. Yeah, getting S4 snowballing is a, a great way for Alliance to get to the mid game and really make stuff happen. Because obviously, once EGM gets relocate, you're going to have this really nice pairing where the storm jumps in, the relocates on top of it, and then you get your Sven in there and you just pretty much kill anyone. So it's something that wings are going to have to keep in mind. I see on the bottom lane, both Loader and Faith PN closing on the level six. Well, I mean, once we hit the six on on the Nyx Assassin, can we expect Faith PN to to become rather active across the map? Is he going to have his eyes on a particular target? I think he just wants to get information more than anything. Like, sure, getting a kill would be great. If they can go on S4, they have enough burst between him and Oracle, and okay. Now moving in, the backup from EGM, turns around, nice then, holds back Loader, Ice Ice, roaring EGM up. They've got enough damage, the Warcraft from Loader is keeping EGM alive. Fabian coming back in, they'll take down the IO, Loader still playing around, he's got a Mango, so it does have another stun available, but Shadow's turned into the fight as well. Pounces in onto Sven, the follow through stun from Faith, they'll find themselves a second kill, Wings. And this time it's Alliance getting outplayed, unable to stop Wings' reaction there. And Two loaders uh, moving. That's a perfect example of why Beastmaster owns Sven. Because you put one boar on him, and God strength or not, you ain't moving anywhere. Even with tether speed, he could barely keep up with the boars, and he was trying to kill the one to get EGM away, but, you know, Ice Ice had the cooldown up and eventually got the second boar out, and at that point, the Wisp is already dead. So really nicely played by Wings. Solid rotation. They even had vision of the lane afterwards, so they, they placed the ward. They're trying to protect that lane as much as possible, make Loda rotate back towards his own safe lane. And uh, obviously, 
Oh, they're gonna go for a kill here. Innocence. Mm -hmm. See, I can play around this. He does have a disarm available. Oh, Ravage being expended. Bordo going all in on this one, but he disarms though. He tries for a TP out, but the, the swipes from Admiral Bordo are too much, and they do continue through for the kill. S4 getting very low. Papian tried to make a go on it with the Vendetta move, but S4 still has to be careful. Low on mana. Sentry's dropped down, but they don't need to worry about any infants from that man. Moonlight Shadow is low on the mana blink. In fact, they're trying to turn and kill AK, and they might just do it. Stunned from Papian. They're going to find it here. Ake can't get himself out, and Wings do manage to get away with the kill. Not the initial kill that they set out for, but a kill at the end of it all. A lot of the heroes on Alliance right now are just incapable of fighting, and because they expend Ravage on the support kill, it, it just means that Wings can play a lot more loosely for the, the next couple of uh, couple of minutes, because Ravage is a very long cooldown, two and a half minutes. Interestingly enough, I am i haven't really uh, been able to cast any of the Wings games, so... Okay, oh. S4 is okay. dead. Super dead. But I, I, maybe you can answer this actually, because I don't know. Does Ice Ice always buy Vlad's first on Beastmaster? Because oh, I don't know if I I've seen there this. There are before. some. I know if the game does, you know, requires. Because people have mind control, they will pick up an early Vlad if they feel the momentum going. So Ice Ice, I guess he's the same. Bulldog hoping for a Denied the Ancients. Isn't going to happen. A roar and a follow through from Shadow takes him down. But uh, no, I've only seen Beastmasters in games where there is this pace, there is this one to group up and go. They do just pick up the Vlad's early. I mean, yeah, if you're gonna five minutes, yeah. the item is obviously great. It's just very uncommon to, yeah, to see it as picked up first. Yeah. I guess the reasoning is you already have max inner beast anyway, so you have the 45% bonus attack speed, and it also opens up opportunities to go for a much, much earlier Roshan if, say, Ravage is down, for example. So it's, it's definitely good. I'm just like, I haven't seen it before. At least not here. No, I guess it's kind of nice as well with the slot in the fight. So, getting new down relatively low. Uh, it's not going to fall. Oh, he has armor. Like, he's actually fine. But uh, yeah, when Slark's trying to go on these tankier targets, you know, Loader, Ake, Bulldog, you know, heroes that he can kill, but it takes a long time. Just having that little bit of life steal, just you know, allows them to to fight a little bit better. When the Radiant's fights go on, if, if Beastmaster's there standing next to him. Top lane, Faith Bian looking to make a go with a Vendetta. They're just going to be the first one to move in, but he doesn't expect the Nyx assassin. There we have counter action, but the damage. They need a little bit more to bring down Lotus. Dip in from S4. They'll take down the Oracle. Can they get themselves anything more? Their Moonlight Shadow's down. They don't have the detection, so Alliance, they have to be careful. Backing off. TP in from Shadow. Seeing if he can get in position to go for a kill. They'll stun S4. Oh, no. S4. His spidey senses tingle. And he zips away just in time. Man, Wings wanted to kill her so bad. I think that maybe Shadow and Faith Beyond were being a bit too greedy because they knew that the Sven was on very low HP, so they just kept running instead of going for a, a target they could just jump on straight away. Because he Radiant's definitely waited it out for a very long time. He could have stunned that of him at a very, very early in that engagement. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And now, of course, they have the Ravage back up. So next time Alliance want to fight or Wings want to engage into them, they're going to have to deal with that. Faith. Vendetta back in five seconds. Mid lane loader. Continues to farm up on the armlet. He's not quite at the top though. As we can see it is. Wings with the higher cores. Only just though. Now looking for the vision. You've got Ice Ice moving around as well with the Beastmaster. Raw at the ready. So loader. Could be in trouble, Faith. He's going to look to open up with the initial stun. Nuke as well. The roar from Ice Ice. They should be able to do it. He's going to get the chance to get the armlet off. He is. Loader. Can he toggle his way out of this one? He's certainly going to make it hard for them. And Loader, is, he's going to be fine. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. That split second chance to, to get the armlet off. And he's fine. Bulldog turns up with Ake. So they can turn this one around. The stun holds back the ogre, but he's already got off the ignite. S4 being relocated in by EGM. Vortexing in the Nyx Assassin. And Alliance will be able to find themselves the kill there. Frustration for Wings as they couldn't quite finish Loader off in time. Uh, if he had a book, that was a kill. Um, I mean, that's, that's just the build, right? If he has a book one, Loda 100% dies there, because he wouldn't have even had uh, mana to use Warcry or anything like that. Sven doesn't have a great base mana pool. So unfortunate, like you mentioned for Wings, good turnaround though, Alliance being ready to react. They had a vision in the bottom rune spot because of the ward anyway, so they, they had a pretty easy relocate target. And this game for Wings, you know, they're they're doing all right. They're, they're winning the laning phase and whatnot, but Sven is going to become a real issue for them, especially once he gets BKB and Blink. How many do you feel that's the build for, for Loader? He gets oh BKB. yeah, he, he needs BKB. Maybe not next, but like you, you finish Treads, maybe go Echo, then Blink, then BKB. That's the, the natural item progression on most fence. If he's... Oh. Set up onto Ake. 
A stun combination is there. Blink moves in with the star form. They'll burst him down top lane as well. They're looking for more action. Wings loader moving in onto ice side. Why is on there on the sideline? Shadow as well. Legion comes across, boosting up loader with the roar onto the IO. The nuke from Innocent. They'll take him down. And now loader all alone. No one to help him out here. He'll try his best with the armlet toggling. Shadow, he's got a shadow dart so he could commit here. Pop the ult. Doesn't even need it at the end of the day. The nukes from Innocent. Far too much for the Sven to deal with. And wings, they find a quick kill mid. Follow it through with two kills top. And they'll turn it into a tower push as well. Yeah, really nice movement coming out of Wings there, realizing that there's no more vision top. They got the sentry on the, the ward that Alliance had placed a little bit earlier, so unfortunately, they were not able to see that one coming. Tower going their way, it's going to secure the book one there for Ice Ice, and now he's pretty much back on track. Having the Vlads with the, the book is going to just be like a ridiculous amount of pushing potential and damage. Not to mention the sustain, as we mentioned, like getting Roshan is pretty important in these types of games, and their team allegedly is pretty crap at killing Roshan, so having the Vlads is going to help a lot in that regard. Now looking over Alliance S4, does have 2.1k gold on top of the cell ring as he's looking to build towards that bloodstone. Mech, as we saw, is down and complete on Bulldog. He's halfway through 10, not quite got the level 11 Ravage online yet. Already Faith Bian on the Nyx Assassin. He's managed to make a fair bit of action happen across the map so far. Radiance and he's looking for more. Double damage and Vendetta as he moves down towards the bottom. Already Alliance uh, retreating. S4 on EGM. Not wanting to hang around here. Scan on scan action. Isn't going to attack. catch anyone. Either. That one is though. Dire. They will be aware. That's a potential movement from a Wings member. Now uh, expected to be the, the Nyx Assassin. Bulldog's ready and waiting with an Invis rune on the Tide Hunter. Maybe they could try and make something happen with this. They are going to group up as three. Ake and S4 right behind him. Faith Bian's hiding in the tree line. As they can sniff him out, is he going to reveal himself? He's keeping himself hidden. There's CS4. He's still 20 seconds before Vendetta, so unlikely to come out again before that. Mid lane, Wings are finding the space with the four of them to, to look for a tier two. So this could be a trade, but of course a tier one for a tier two trade. And we want the Wings... They'll certainly be happy with. They take the tier Dyer's two. They may even have a chance to react to this tier one push. Alliance going to be drawn. They'll try maybe for a, a crossover behind Alliance as they get forced back. TPs will be coming through. Blink to start it off. Fake the ant. Looking to lead in onto Bordog. He does have the Ravage available. He's going to look towards Blink. There is the coast. Lotus turn up as well. EJ brings it into the fight. Ravage comes through. They've taken down one. Soul Dog? That Ravage hit zero gears. And now Wings, they're hitting him back hard, Andy. Where's your Ravage now? Uh, this was a total disaster for Alliance. That was some seriously questionable play from Bulldog. He had Ravage and S4 just died. He, like, he didn't use his ability to save his core player. I don't know, that was really bizarre. <laughs> Did you see that TP? Yep. I did indeed. I, I don't have oh. any. I don't have any words for that. That was just. Oh, well, a series, that... We'll call that a series of unfortunate events, and we'll leave it at that. That that just happened. Everything. Wings. It was a Shiva tribute. You know what happens? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, if we've had the Shiva ravage, that's definitely the bulldog TP. That <laughs> <I> was. <laughs> All right, so clearly not the fight that Alliance Radiance were looking for. I think the the Sven's item progression is just not quite up to snuff. You know, normally you see this hero and he's always, always at the top of the CS charts and always at the top of the net worth charts, regardless of the state of the game. And the fact of the matter is, Lotus is just not able to keep up. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Wings have been constantly pressuring him as Faith Beyond's over here in Vendetta, just checking things out. Uh, I don't think there's any sentries in the area from Alliance, but there is an Observer Ward. Oh, there we go. And the arrow to follow up again, Wings. Kill after kill now at this point. They are, um, they're turning up in the lines. They need to do something about this, as we can see very suddenly. With 17 minutes in, it's a 10k lead. Wings starting to cement their position. They'll look to Roshan. Alliance, no Ravage for 45 seconds. So it will be a half one to contest. And they're in the wrong half of the map to do so anyway. So Wings looks to get away with this for free. Yeah, this is when the Vlads comes into play. It just makes the Rosh so much safer. Having to disarm two from uh, Innocent at level two, it's pretty uh, pretty OP, actually. They're just taking no damage. It's not the fastest Rosh, but it's super safe. A lot of good things happening for Wings. As, <laughs> well, as to say that, that's a very good thing for our side. 17 and a half minutes in, book three in Vlads.
Just yeah, just your ordinary Beastmaster. Yeah, I mean, Alliance are at least doing something in, in regards to taking an objective while Wings get the Roshan. They, they kill the offlane tier 1. Not the most valuable. It's actually their first tower of the game, now that I look. They haven't killed a single tier 1 up until this point, so... Doing uh, doing something. I'm looking for more if they press you onto the tier 2. At the same time, though, Wings are moving down mid and bottom. Both lanes have already reached the high ground of Alliance. They are going to have to react. And as we can see, the presence of Faith Bian actually being enough to stop Alliance forcing the push on this tier 2. And mid lane, I mean, they, they have to trouble. address this. The thing yeah. is, they, okay, they, okay. they S4. Oh. A man who's a master of cancelling TPs has just had his cancelled. Uh, this isn't, this is not good. Uh, they'll have to relocate him back. So they've relocated S4 back for the defense. Ice Ice goes in Lord Rota. Blinks has fallen to Duke Danny Gem. Bulldog gets the Ravage off. Does catch more of them. But it doesn't seem to matter. Shadow jumps in. Takes down a second one as the Ogre to fall. Alliance being forced back towards the fountain. The mid lane racks are down. And Wings get the objective. Absolutely cleaning. And at the start in the lanes where it looked like Alliance were holding their own at this point. Wings have shown up. And uh, Alliance, wanna, need, they need to answer the phone. I want to tell a story of a Beastmaster who has not contested the entire game, who now has Book 3 Vlads and 1,600 gold at 19 Dyer's minutes into the game. He has more net worth than any member of Alliance, and this is why I was really questioning. Um, we might have to wait, because Lota might be dead. Yeah, Shadow going through the arrow. He's going to catch EGM, the stone from Faith Bian. EGM bursted low, and spent to fall as well. Two down on Elias. Blink jumps in. They'll finish off the tight hunter. Three kills for Wings. 20 for six, with just 19 minutes in. But Alliance on the verge of losing a second set of racks. Yeah, I think this is actually just game. Yep. They don't have Ravage, so without Ravage and the Sven being dead for another 30 seconds, they have a tier 2, I suppose. This is the last draw here from S4. Gets Carapace stunned by the mix, and uh, GG well played. All right. Oh, wow. Minutes. That's, uh, yeah. There, there were so many things about this game that just seemed a little bit off for me. Like, not, not contesting Ice Ice. I mean, clearly Alliance had some idea of what they wanted Ake to do during the early game, but what I really felt the most was that Ake was not comfortable playing in that role. Like, when you look at Ake, he's the guy who's usually sitting around you know, helping a lane, and that's what he tried to do on an ogre. But ogre doesn't 